I'm a St. Lucian citizen and became a St. Lucian citizen through the CBI program they offer, um, the Citizenship by Investment program, and I gave up my U.S. citizenship, the only other citizenship I had. Um, and, well, I, I've been seeing a lot of news and hearing about a lot of news, um, getting a lot of messages from people who are concerned that the Caribbean passports are being devalued um, and they're going to, like the rumor is that they're going to lose their visa-free travel to Europe, the UK, and uh, that it's going to make St. Lucian passports and other Caribbean passports just not very good. So to be clear, um, this video is really just to address a lot of the fear-mongering and concerns people have regarding these programs. A lot of other people on YouTube, as well as the media broadly, has been stirring up a lot of fear regarding this topic of Caribbean passports losing, losing their visa-free access. Even in now my country, St. Lucia, um, the opposition party has been stirring up these fears as well. But in truth, little has really changed and is changing. These media organizations, probably the opposition party as well, um, and these other YouTubers are just fear-mongering and milking uh, just regular people for views and attention and support. Why are they doing this? Well, mostly because, well, they want views, they want attention, they want to, like, they're running businesses. They want to make money off their viewers. They want to sign up new clients. And the best way to sign up new clients is to make them uh, believe that something is urgent or that they need you. So that they need you to be able to sign up to a different program rather than one of the Caribbean programs, which are relatively simple to just do on your own. They also want to appear as trustworthy and as if they're providing you information that is particularly helpful to avoid stepping where you shouldn't be stepping, essentially. But in truth, they're really just stringing people along with these messages because if you actually understand what's happening to the visa situation, pretty much everything I've heard, at least the other YouTubers and the media say, is just downright lies or complete misunderstandings and misinterpretations of what's actually going on. So to be absolutely clear, this video is just to clear up a lot of that nonsense and this clickbait that's been going around and dispel a lot of these fears and myths um, because these things have been going on since before I even signed up to the St. Lucia program, these same rumors and fears. And while some of them are becoming somewhat true now, in reality, they're being completely misframed. And I think it's just dishonest how people are presenting it. So to get to the point of the video, nothing has really changed for St. Lucian passport holders. Nothing has changed for other Caribbean passport holders. Um, all the news that's going around is more or less just fear mongering. Um, the only change that has really occurred is the Dominica passport. Um, they, uh, they have lost their visa free access to the UK. So in regards to the UK, Yes, Caribbean passports are losing their visa-free access, but that's not really the case. You might find that absurd because, in truth, yes, yes, they are losing their visa-free access, but it's not unique to Caribbean countries. Seventy other not, or no, seventy-nine other countries are losing their visa-free access to the UK shortly. Everyone is going to require a visa to go to the UK in 2024. So to be clear about that, U.S. passport holders, Canadian passport holders, Australian passport holders, all countries in 2024, by the end of 2024, are going to need a visa to go to the U.K. There's going to be no more visa-free access, true visa-free access to the U.K. anymore. Does that sound absurd to you? Well, yeah, absolutely, because what country would eliminate visa-free access to their closest allies and their main, like, the country that sends in the most tourists of any and very wealthy tourists that spend quite a bit of money. Well, yeah, it is absurd because the UK is eliminating visa-free access, but in practice, they're not really doing this. It's just a new regulation they put in place and a new way to rob tourists just a little bit more. That's the only thing that's really changing. So before you go to the UK now, um, stop for like St. Lucia passport holders, other Caribbean passport holders, and most other smaller countries, 
um, they are instituting this at the end of 2023. You're going to just have to apply a little e-form. Previously, when you were arriving in the UK, you would have to fill out a physical form. Um, they would give you on a plane and it would just be basic details like your name, um, where you plan to stay, um, how long you're going to stay, and your email address, maybe your phone number. That's, that's about it. The e-form on the new system they're going to be doing, you're going to just have to simply apply before you get on a plane for an e-form and pay, I think it is seven British pounds or maybe it's nine British pounds, I don't know, less than 15 US dollars, you're gonna have to pay them and just with credit card or whatever, and then you're going to just simply have to fill out that, what used to be a physical form that would give you on a plane, um, you're now gonna have to fill that online before you get on your flight. That's really all that's gonna change. Once you do that, you'll be granted the same, like, visa-free access as your country previously had. So for from my understanding, like the visa-free access for St. Lucia, the country I'm from, um, with the new changes that are going on at the end of this year, at the end of 2023, I'm just gonna simply have to fill out that same form, but digitally, and then pay them a small nominal sum, less than 15 US dollars, and then I'll have six months of a uh, six month tour to visa if I want for the UK, just like it's been for the last few years. So fundamentally, nothing has really changed. Are we losing visa free access to the UK? Yes, everyone is. But are we losing visa free access to the UK? Eh, not really. Okay, now to address the uh, like the EU side of it, because there's a lot of fears regarding the EU canceling visa free access to Caribbean citizens and St. Lucian citizens like myself. So is this actually happening? Similar to the UK, it is actually happening. It's just, it's not really happening. It's, they're doing just like the UK. They're removing visa-free access to pretty much all countries around the world, with the exception of EU member states, um, which don't even need a passport to travel in between them. Um, they're removing visa free access for everyone and requiring you to pay, I think it's, I forget, it's either seven or nine euros, something in this range. Uh, again, less than 15 US dollars. You're gonna have to fill out an E form just like with the UK. Um, and that's about it. You're gonna just apply for that and boom, you get your normal Schengen visa. That's uh, 90 days within a 180 day period. And yeah, that's it. So fundamentally, are you going to need a visa to go to the EU soon as a Caribbean citizen, a St. Lucian citizen? Yes, but so is pretty much all countries around the world. And still, you're not going to you're not going to have what people think of when they hear losing visa free access. You're not going to have to go to a consulate and sit down and go to an interview, show them 12 months of bank statements give them a detailed itinerary of everything you're doing. You're not gonna have to do any of this sort of stuff. It'll be an e-form and a small payment. So are we losing these free access? Yeah, to the EU as well. But are we? Eh, not really. So while I've kind of addressed all the fear mongering and clickbait that's been going, going around regarding this topic, um, and kind of like the, I hope, clarify that no, the Caribbean programs aren't really under attack. There's not really a big issue in this regard currently. Um, I'd like to ask you a question. Um, if the UK and the EU actually removes visa-free access, or even this little easy e-form for us to do, to get our normal visa, um, would it actually matter to you? I reckon in truth, for most of us, it wouldn't really matter. So like for me, I became St. Lucian and gave up my US passport because I wanted to escape the grip of the US. I wanted to escape the world culture and society. I wanted to not have to deal with any of the nonsense that is present in the US. I didn't like the lifestyle. I didn't like the politics of it. I didn't like the way of life and the way people fought in the US. And of course, there were some financial and travel benefits to boot as well to becoming St. Lucian. 
But my point is, not once in the last... I've been St. Lucian exclusively for about two years now with no U.S. passport. Not once have I had an issue with a visa because of this. Not once have I even visited the UK or Canada or America or the European Union. I've been to tons of other countries. I've not had any interest in really going there. Will I like to go there sometime in the future? Yeah, I, I, I'd like to visit and do some of the hikes. I'm really into hiking, but is that really a, a big factor for me? Is it really a big effect on my life? No. Would I prefer ease of access to the UK and the EU? Sure, of course, why not? Why wouldn't you want more visa-free access? Like, there's no downside to it. But does it really matter if that's even the case? Even if it wasn't just a silly little e-form and a little robbery of 10, 15 dollars maybe? Would it really matter? How many times would you actually have to apply for a visa to go to one of these countries? Unless you have family there and visit a lot, you're not really gonna go there much. There's plenty of other places in the world. And like for me, if I got denied a visa to the EU and I couldn't go on a hike there, like I couldn't go visit the Alps, would I be uh, upset? No, not really, no. I could just go to like one of the other mountain ranges. If I got a denied for a US visa as well, same thing. I could just go to like the Andes in South America. I could go here to Nepal, like where I am now. It's very difficult to get a plot, like denied for a visa in the first place. Um, I've never been denied for a visa despite having to apply at embassies and show financial documents and all that many times now. That's not, or a couple of times now, but that's not, it's never been uh, an issue. And I mean, that's coming from someone, look at me, I'm quite young, I'm not, I don't go places particularly well dressed all the time. I just show up to the visa interview and I've never had a single issue. So people have this idea because they haven't actually applied for visas and been in that situation before, that applying for visas is super difficult. And it's primarily because they've never done it before and it's some foreign thing. And they always hear of applying for visas from more or less people who are trying to come and live in certain countries. So like in Texas, I heard many people from Mexico who did come illegally after being denied U.S. visas and they said the process was very difficult. But they were coming to the U.S. with the intent to work, so that's one reason they could have been denied. But even if the government didn't know that, they still didn't have any capital and means to them. They didn't travel extensively. So all the government really could tell is they wanted to come to the U.S. They didn't have money. They knew people in the U.S. who were working in the U.S. And uh, they don't have a real reason to return to Mexico or to leave to another country. So if you have means, if you have capital, if you're a respectable person, if you have connections to other countries or simply have been many places and leave according to the visa you are on. If you're just honest and respectable about these things, getting a visa is not even very difficult. So to me, I don't care if even if we lost visa-free access to the UK and the EU, it wouldn't really affect me. The only reason I would care really is because I feel like the people of the Caribbean, people who were born there and grew up there, should be able to go to the UK visa-free. I, I think it would be absurd for them not to be able to. So that's really all for this video. Um, I would really encourage you, I, I wanna hear regarding if you would actually be concerned with losing visa-free access to the UK and the EU. Like, is it actually a concern to you? Because I don't know, for me, the idea of having access there is nice, but it's not really a big factor for me. 
And as outlined in this video, it doesn't seem like we're going to be losing that anytime soon. Um, it seems like it's all just fear mongering, clickbait, and uh, media spin on a otherwise situation that's happening to pretty much the entire world regarding the UK and EU visa-free access. But uh, with that being said, bye-bye.